we have a couple swearing in ceremonies and I'm going to turn it over to Chief Stewart and let him conduct that part of the meeting for us. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. I thank the council. We do have five officers tonight that would like to swear in who are going to go into full-time service with the police department. Now, I'll call them down. I'll give you a little brief on uh, each officer so you know their background. First officer I'd like to call down is Patrol Officer Melissa Boggs. Let's see if you come down. Uh, Melissa is a graduate of Thornwell High School. She began her career in 2001 at Converse College in Public Safety. She has most recently came to us from the city of Spartanburg as a public safety officer. She's a distinguished graduate of South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. Her next officer I'd like to call down is also a fireman with the city, and he is going to serve as a reserve officer with our department. It's Reserve Officer Ron Branion. Officer Branion has 11 years of service currently has the rank of lieutenant with the fire department. He has also been in county fire service for 17 years and has been involved with various teams. Also of note, uh, Ron Branion serves on the arson task force uh, between the police department and the fire department. Our next officer I'd like to call down is patrol officer Jeffrey Gerard. Uh, officer Gerard has been employed at the city since September of 2012. He is a uh, 2010 honor graduate of Anderson University also holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Management, also serves as a deacon at his church. And I understand I talked with Officer Gerard before we get started. He has some family here. Thank you for being with us tonight. Also, uh, next uh, Kansas Patrol Officer Zach Parks. Uh, officer Zach Parks has been with the city as a detention officer since 2010. He was transferred to patrol in 2012 and began his career at, as a Perry Correctional Officer in 2006. Our next uh, officer is uh, Reserve Officer Kevin Bruce Reeves. Officer Reeves is also a 20-year veteran of the fire department. He serves at the Anderson Fire Department and also here at the Police Department where he serves on our uh, area crime uh, arson task force. He currently holds the rank of engineer. He has a Bachelor of Science in Fire Science and will obtain his master's next month in Occupational <coughs> Safety and Health. He also resides in Anderson. What we'll do now is administer the uh, Constitutional Oath and the Statutory Oath. If everyone would raise their right hand. Aye. As a police officer of the city of Anderson, do solemnly swear or affirm that I am duly qualified according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties thereof this office to which I have been elected and that I will to the best of my ability discharge the duties thereof Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. Of this state and of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. This is your statutory oath. Aye. As a police officer of the city of Anderson. As a police officer of the city of Anderson. Will equally, fairly, and impartially. Equally, fairly, and impartially. To the best of my ability and skill. Exercise the trust reposed in me. Exercise the trust reposed in me. And will use my best endeavors. And use my best endeavors. To preserve the peace. To preserve the peace. And carry into effect. And carry into effect. According to law. According to law. The purpose for which I've been elected. The purpose for which I've been elected. So help me God. So help me God. Uh, and while we're here tonight, I have a special uh, certificate to present to uh, Ron and Bruce. This is their certificate from the academy, which I've been holding on to. It's a certified reserve officer. And I congratulate each one of you.
John, is that the first time we've had uh, firefighters come to be patrol officers? Is that a first in the city? Um, Chief or Adam? We have any double duty uh, police uh, I think we have one reserve officers? Officer Dusty Morgan, I think, is a reserve officer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, I thank him for doing double duty for us, though. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, the minutes of the September 9th meeting have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Not hearing any, I have a motion to approve. First by Mr. Roberts. Second. Second by Dr. Thompson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes of September the 9th pass unanimously. We have one item of old business, and that item is requesting the second and third reading of Ordinance 1313, amending the 2012-2013 budget. Mr. Moore. Mr. Mayor and Council, I would briefly go back over this. Um, we have finished the fiscal year of 2012-13 on June 30th. And that budget preparation began back in um, probably February of 2012, so pretty far in advance <coughs> of the final. At that time, a lot of times we do not know whether or not we'll get grants. As you see, most of these are specialized grants, especially in the police area. Uh, obviously, the council made a decision to move forward with uh, Carolina Wren Park, which created a bond issue. So a number of things, and I'm not going to do all of them, but all of them have been before you in some form or fashion at a public meeting uh, regarding these grants or the bonds that you approve. So, again, we make these changes to the budget since you've adopted them. And in many cases, like the police, to have those expenditures added to their expenditure budget makes it better for them as far as managing that budget within what you've approved for them. So that's kind of the reason for it. Uh, we are expecting the audit pretty soon after these are adopted. I think maybe Peggy's looking at the end of October. So uh, we're well underway in that audit process and should have that. So with that, we'd recommend it to you on uh, second and third reading. And certainly uh, Peggy's here if you have uh, any other questions. We had a discussion on the 9th. Um, yeah, we've, um, are there any additional comments, questions? I move we pass this on second reading. Uh, first by Dr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Harbin. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously on the second reading. I make a motion we approve it on third reading, Mayor. Uh, first by Mr. Harbin. Second. Second by Mr. Stewart. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously on the third and final reading. I have one item of new business, and that's a referral. We request consideration of referral to the Planning Commission, a petition to rezone 312 East Morris Street from R5 single family, family residential to RN10 multifamily residential. Uh, more. Mr. Mayor, Council, I did uh, take a look at this, did not get a chance to talk in more recent depth. So I'm going to let him go over that one pretty quickly. You may have a question or two about it. He'd probably be better positioned to answer it than I would. This is a referral to the Planning Commission. Uh, if you refer this tonight, they will review this request at the October 1st meeting. But uh, this property is at 312 East Morris Street, and there are four structures on that site that are believed to be slave cabins. Uh, the Palmetto Trust for Historic Preservation actually is an ownership of it, and they have potential buyers. So in order to do what they want to do, which is to turn each unit into um, residences, it would have to be rezoned from the single family designation to RM10 multifamily because there are four properties on one site. But again, upon referral, this would go to the Planning Commission on October 1st. Any questions? I'll just ask Maurice, this I'm is a, a historical site, right? Where you have the four log cabins. That's correct. It's just. And it's we have we been preserving those over the years? Or what's happened? I'm sorry, what's happened to. Have, have they been preserved over the years? Actually, uh, they were in really poor condition and they were. Um, on the verge of being condemned and the Palmetto Trust for Historic Preservation 
they acquired the property and secured it. They did some general maintenance and uh, it's in the same condition that it has been for the past two or three years. But again, with it being in their ownership, they can <coughs> control a buyer to you know, make the best fit for the particular piece of property because it is historic, like you said. It also is located in the um, historic district, the um, Anderson Historic District as well. So not only do you have Palmetto Trust um, overseeing this, it will go before a Board of Architecture review too if it is rezoned. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Uh, motion to refer to the Planning Commission. Yeah, first by Mr. Stewart, second by Mr. Roberts. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Referral to the Planning Commission. Before we go to administrative briefing, we have five AU students here in the audience with their teacher, Dr. Becky Campbell, and their nursing students. We, uh, uh, we had um, 10 or so a couple of weeks ago, and they are here on their last semester before graduating and going out into the real world. And they're very interested to see how the um, health professionals can get involved in their community. So um, it was good talking to them, and I uh, wish you guys all the luck in the world. Administrative briefing, Mr. Moore. Just the calendar. Uh, no executive session tonight. Um, I think I'm right on this, but uh, the sister cities meeting was uh, is going to be rescheduled. Is that right? Yeah, so the 27th of this month, so that ends this month, and then next month, the first week in October, uh, you have the city's, one of the city's downtown events, that being Fresh Taste, and that's a combination of restaurants uh, using different farms that uh, raise or, or the products are, are raised locally or grown locally. So that'll be Tuesday night, uh, 6 to 9. Then the only other thing we have other than the standards are there will be a public safety committee on the 3rd, and uh, the primary purpose of that is two. Number one on the agenda will be uh, a six-month update to the committee uh, from Judge Madison about progress he's been making on the, the, the new court system. And then the second one is uh, you do need, do need to consider the reappointment or the appointment of an assistant city judge. So that's all we have for tonight. Great. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. No uh, first by Mr. Roberts. This is a record, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Pretty close. <laughs> Second by Mr. Stewart. It's when you do good committee work, right? All those in favor, sir? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Okay.